The big news from Tata Motors today is that they are going to be making supercars for the world from 2025. Sounds too ambitious for you? Well, you're wrong. And actually, so am I. Because Tata Motors isn't going to be making supercars for the world, but their ambitions are even bigger than that. Because today, at the unveil of this, which we'll get to in a second, Tata Groups Bada Saab, which means Tata Motors Bada Saab, said that the ambitions are to go global. He actually said exactly this. Our aspiration extends beyond India. Join us today as we take a pivotal step in signaling a paradigm change in the future of cars. And the preview to that future is centered around this, which is the Avinya concept. Avinya in Sanskrit means innovation. So, there's a lot to expect from this because this is built around an all new platform which is called the Gen 3 platform which basically means it's got a skateboard and that means this doesn't get limited by all the things when you convert an ICE into an EV. So the future is, well, full of exciting possibilities starting with 500 kilometers of minimum range and a charging time of 30 minutes for that. Incredible! What more does the future have? Well, to find out, we need somebody who's a great translator who can look at this and tell you what it all means and somebody who's a great fortune teller. And we've got somebody on hand who can do just that. And that is Martin Ullerich, Head of Design for... Global Head of Design for Tata Motors. Hi. Martin, Good it's been quite a while since we yeah, met, right? Yeah, it's only like a very, very long. days. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, before Martin makes any predictions about the future, I'm going to make one. He's going to say that this is 97% production ready. Mm -hmm. I would say 97%. We have the production car in our design studio. I'm not going to promise the percentage, but I'm going to deliver this vision. This is headed for production, is yes. that what? Yes, uh, we announced it today, 2025. Our intention is to put this on the road. And my challenge is to get as much of this on the road as possible. So this is the design philosophy. And actually, this is the product that we're work already working on. I'm, I'm shocked. Genuinely, I'm shocked. Because I thought of this as a concept concept. It showcases what the platform is capable of, which is mixing up various different product attributes. But this is a shocker. Even if it's not 97%, can I say 50%? 50? You can say 50% because I always like to exceed expectations. <laughs> <laughs> so 2025, we are going to get something that looks like this. That is crazy. But will this be the first product that we see on the new Gen 3 platform? Yes, yes, that's the, that's the intention. You know, Gen 3 is, you know, a white sheet of paper. Hmm. So it's an opportunity to kind of throw everything out and start again. And uh, essentially, that's what we did. We, we questioned absolutely everything and it was an opportunity. That's what it is. It's a kind of dream project. We right. have been working on this for the better part of eight months now, both as a concept and as a production target. But, it, you know, the reality is it will take until 25 to get something this ambitious on the road. Wow, that's still, I mean, in that sense, that's still compressing that's a lot of work. That's very fast. Yeah. That's still very fast. It's very compressed. We were inspired by a catamaran. That was actually one of the starting points. The designer who, who, who came up with this concept mm. really was inspired by the sort of timelessness of a sailboat. Mm. So we used a lot of sort of metaphors in terms of, you know, the stars and the sea and navigation and so mm. forth. And this, this light grill, which can, you know, create different patterns and movement and so forth, uh, that is now the sort of face. So the grill is actually a light signature. So when you see this down the road, now you can immediately, again, it complements this, this new uh -huh. identity. Obviously, one thing that stood out was... Huge wheels. 22 inches. 22 inches. This, this is a new future, so I'm going to question yeah, yeah. it. But, you know, we've got these type of wheels on the road already. And there's no reason why we can't, you know, target, you know, whatever the size the production car will have, it will be very well balanced and it'll be, you know, it won't lose any of this sort of, you know, proportion or, or impression. For this, this vehicle 4.3 is our target. Okay. And uh, even, you know, this height is actually, you know, very competitive, you know, with even our benchmark vehicles. So when we park certain products next to it, you know, it's the same ride height. He's teasing. Uh, mm -hmm. as a normal vehicle. Mm -hmm. It's a very sort of, you know, illusionary design in the sense that this height is the same, but traditionally a, a windscreen would start dropping down somewhere here, but we've taken the windscreen forward 300 mil, created a huge interior. Then at the rear, we've extended the spoiler. So this is the spoiler, but traditionally you would have it ending here and then you would right. have some sort of aero feature. We said we connect it. 
So from side, it looks like a long sort of fuse. Very wash, long, yeah. But actually, it's just a, it's a play. So you have a very strong black seal, but then you have just one horizontal, super clean body side. And then you have this cabin with this floating C pillar, which is just a sort of sail graphic. That's it, super simple. And it gives the impression that this car is more than 4.3 meters and it looks super low, but it's actually not. This is a hatch, right? It's a hatch. It's also a little bit an MPV and it's also a little bit of an SUV because the ride height is 200 mil. Believe it or not, if I took a tape measure and I go floor to the sill, it's the same as a crossover but it doesn't look like it. And again, that's, that's a bit of an illusion because the wheels are so far apart, so you don't read the, that height. It's all about you know, aspect ratio. This is the full widescreen impression. So why would you call this an MPV? Because, because it... of the interior space. The interior is actually the USP of the car. The exterior is very dramatic and looks super modern, but actually we started with the interior. We started with the package. So the interior, for a 4.3 meter vehicle, it has the space of a Harrier inside in terms of leg room, overall cabin space and everything like that. And that's this where- This is 4.5. Uh, 4. Almost six. Yeah. 4. Okay. So what we're looking at now is um, you know, offering space to the customer. Almost not one, but two classes above in terms of whatever category you're gonna buy these vehicles in. Because we're making a portfolio. So wherever the vehicle is, we're gonna offer more space for your size. Couple of questions. Sure. I love the touch, but any particular reason why? Uh, that was, you know, Wind moves. Uh, these actually, these blades, we didn't create it in the physical property, but in the digital property, these, these blades are actually, as you get up to speed, they become more flush. So the idea was that the cables pull and then actually it becomes a disc wheel. So as it accelerates, we've patented it. And now we're, we're looking if there's an opportunity to productionize something like that. And then the, the ca Can I fist bump you? <laughs> The cable is a nice, uh, again, connection to the sailboat metaphor. You know, that's, you know, cool. elegance and that's, for, and it adds a little bit of nice detail. I love that. It's like active aero only. Yeah, it's active on, aero, yes, yes. It's on the wheel. All right, if we can uh, move to the rear, unless there's something else you would no, like. No, no, I mean, the, the main thing is, you know, you know, I like, you know, very clean, clean surfaces. surfaces. This line is the key line. So, you know, this line, we did this probably 30 times as it drops to the rear. So again, like a sailboat or a yacht, you know, the, it's got a nice taper, so when you see it on the side, rear, it has movement, but it's very subtle. I'm going to admit, this is my favorite angle. Okay, cool. I love this line. Mm. I just absolutely love what it's doing. So you see here, we have the T logo, or the new, uh, basically, identity. And uh, what we've done is we've added, actually, into these winglets, which are, again, the, the indicators of the vehicle. Mm. Again, a nice sort of sailboat allegory. Mm. And, uh, yeah, it, it works very well. Very simple, easy to understand, easy to identify. It was in the video you saw. It's the first shot we have of the vehicle. It's super dramatic. So I'm going to guess that this is going to be like a maxi hatch. Yeah, we're trying to figure out the, what to call it because it is a new segment in many ways. It's a fusion. For India? For everywhere. For it's everywhere. a kind of fusion product. We, we said crossover, a little bit of, you know, cab forward, MPV feel, premium hatch, a little bit of everything. So we're going to be getting inside and one of the key questions for me is that during the presentation of the Avinya, there was, the term that was used was wellness. Yes. And there are elements to this car which will make you feel weller better 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 <laughs> better is that a gimmick or is i mean no no it's, it's a genuine auto industry is a fairly slow moving boat now you know we're all coming out of the pandemic you know and wellness was one of the most googled words in the last year so we said how do we get you know it's a it's a big car it's a mobility device it still needs to get you from a to b but if you're in this how are you going to have the experience are you going to enjoy the trip or is it going to be like man i could have spent that time a lot better so we looked at like senses sensory experience so materials the touch we looked at sight in terms of what you see when you sit in the vehicle where the screens are you notice you know we got away from the screen so it's a voice activated uh, system, but we do have a secondary screen, you know, underneath the uh, underneath the dash and on the steering wheel. I think the word that was term that was used was screen free, but I think I would say this is screen minimum. Mm -hmm. Screen minimum would be yeah, more... it's not screen focused. You know, uh, up to now, you know, there's this arms race. You know, more screens, more screens. Yeah. 
And uh, I think, you know, there's actually an opportunity for us to leapfrog the competition go to voice activated interface mm. and the screens are there only to give you the necessary information but you're not screen centric mm. and I think that's actually a really unique opportunity then we have the aroma diffuser in the center console so again no car company has looked at actually smell as a way to you know look at how you experience the environment okay I'm gonna ask you about some of the things looking in here which are just seem a bit strange to me yeah go ahead <laughs> like all that space up front which is after the dash, so yeah, to speak. that's right. So what we wanted to do, like the dash is, you know, we, we're looking, there's a cross car beam mm -hmm. and you have the knee clearance for safety. The airbags will migrate into the A pillar. And then what we're looking at is, you know, the HVAC unit where the air conditioning is and the heater box, that is now in the nose of the car. Traditionally, it would be here. So what we're doing is we're freeing it up. Obviously, visually, it looks great. Maybe we'll put a bench in the front. So now you don't have a tunnel. Uh, but what we're also looking at is how to access that maybe as a storage unit. So maybe somehow these, these, you know, this IP will have almost like a drawer so you can put stuff in there. We're figuring that out. But the main thing visually is when you sit in the vehicle, it's huge. And it has this feeling of, you know, vista, feeling of space, which is unparalleled. Now that you mentioned, where would the aircon vents be? The aircon vents are actually in the door. So these, these. Oh, those are the aircon vents. Yeah, that's. This is now like an airplane. So every ca every passenger has the door. It's adjustable. It's exactly like an aircraft. So each each person has their own sound system in their headrest, and then they have their own HVAC. Well, what's the reasoning behind getting the sound systems built into the headrest? So way? what we're looking at, there's a technology which allows you to experience uh, sound in a local area, which potentially I'm sitting next to you, I would be able to listen to music and you wouldn't hear it and vice versa. So either we can listen to the same song together or we can do our own thing. So one way you can have multiple personal spaces. Exactly. Or, okay. or we all listen to the same thing together or you say, please, Martin, turn that song off. <laughs> This vehicle also, you know, we're look, talking about 2025. We know from a, you know, ADAS point of view, in mm. terms of, you know, how it's going to communicate with the environment, it'll be more and more. So there is a number of generations that we're planning in terms of the upgrades during this product's life cycle, which eventually lead the industry in towards autonomy. But that's a long way. So we'll get to that conversation maybe in a while. In a yeah, couple we, of we years. still like to drive well, our yeah, cars no, no, ourselves. Me too. It still has a steering wheel. <laughs> But, but yeah. that's the reality, it will yeah. become part of a greater system. Going back to where we started off, we're just saying Tata Motors, new ambitions. Usually products are a lot of, hey, the market segment is going in this direction, yes. Yes. the volumes are going there, right. and this is where people are willing to spend. Did you do any of that for this? Yeah, we did. Uh, we've been doing it for actually quite a while. So first of all, you know, electrification is coming. Mm -hmm. And this is actually a global product. So this will be sold in a number of markets internationally. So this is a real sea change for us. And at the same time, you know, we see this as the future, mm -hmm. both in India and globally. Personally, for an Indian company to stand up and say, we're going to go global yes. in the world of EVs, is there some amount of, uh, you know, butterflies in the stomach? Oh yeah, definitely, <laughs> definitely. Yeah. I mean, it's a huge challenge. But I think we're now capable of producing a globally competitive product. Even our products that are on the road would mm. sell in many international markets. So with this now intent and this sort of, you know, confidence, I have no doubt we can take on anybody. <laughs>